Hi, I'm Torben Janssen from thoughtsonjava.org. Today I'm here with the ultimate guide for using derived queries with Spring Data JPA. We will start with a simple query and extend it until you know all the features you need to use derived queries in your project. Before that, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get new videos about Spring Data JPA and hibernate every week. All applications need to execute queries to retrieve data from their database. With JPA and Hibernate, you can write JPQL, native SQL queries, or criteria queries. And you can use all of them with Spring Data JPA. In most cases, Spring Data just makes it a little bit easier. Spring Data JPA acts as a layer on top of JPA, and it offers you two ways to define your query. You can let Spring Data JPA derive the query from the name of a method in your repository, or you can specify your own JPQL or native query using a query annotation. Both options work great and you should be familiar with them. In this video, I will focus on derived queries and I will dive deeper into defining a custom query in future articles and videos. Let's take a quick look at the domain model that we will use in all of the examples. It consists of an author and a book entity with a many-to-many -many association between them. Spring Data often gets praised for its derived query feature. It makes the definition of a simple query extremely quick and comfortable. As long as your method name starts with find by, read by, query by, count by, or get by, and follows the right pattern, Spring Data generates the required JPQA query. That might sound like you will never need to write your own queries again, but that's not the case. It's a great way to define simple queries. But as soon as you need to use more than two query parameters, or your query gets at least a little bit complex, you should use a custom query. That's either because the query name gets really complicated to write and read, or because you exceed the capabilities of the method name parser. That said, let's now take a look at Spring Data JPA's derived query feature. This is an example of a query that loads author entities with a given first name. As you can see, the definition of a derived query is pretty simple and self-explaining. I started the name of the method with findBy and then referenced the entity attributes for which I want to filter in the where clause. And then I define a method parameter with the same name as the referenced entity attribute. You can then use this query by injecting an instance of the author repository and calling the findByFirstName method with the first name you want to search for. When you run this test case and activate the logging of SQA statements, you can see the generated SQA statement in your log file. You can extend this method to search for author entities with a given first name and last name by combining them with AND. Spring Data JPA, of course, also allows you to concatenate multiple checks using an OR clause. As expected, when you call this repository method, Spring Data JPA and Hibernate generate an SQL query with a WHERE clause that filters the result based on the first name and last name columns. Now let's traverse an association in your query. If you want to filter for an attribute of an associated entity, you can traverse managed relationships by referencing the attribute that maps the association followed by the attribute of the related entity. Here you can see an example in which I reference the books attribute on the author entity to traverse the mapped association. I then reference the title attribute of the associated book entity. That creates a query that returns all authors who have written a book with a given title. When you call this query method, Hibernate generates an SQL query that joins the author and the book table and compares the value in the title column with the provided bind parameter value in the where clause. If you just reference an entity attribute in your method name, Spring Data JPA will generate a simple equals comparison. You can also specify different comparison operations by using one of the following keywords together with the name of your entity attribute. You can use like to check if the value of an entity is like a provided string, containing to check if the value of an entity attribute contains the provided string, 
ignore case to ignore the case when comparing the value of an entity attribute with a provided string, between to check if the value of an entity attribute is between two provided values, less than or greater than to check if the value of an entity attribute is less or greater than a provided one. Let's head over to the IDE and give them a try. Here is a simple example that selects an author entity which first name contains the string tor while ignoring its case. When you call this method on the author repository, string data JPA and Hibernate generate an SQL query that converts the provided string and the value in the first name column to uppercase and creates a like expression to check if the first name contains the provided string. You can of course also order your query results. In JPQL, this would require an order by clause in your query. With Spring Data JPA, you just need to add the words order by to your query, followed by the name of the entity attribute and the abbreviations ask or desk for your preferred order. This query retrieves all book entities whose title contains a provided string in the ascending order of their title. When you call this method on the book repository, Spring Data JPA and Hibernate generate an SQA statement with the expected order by clause. If you require dynamic ordering, you can add a parameter of type sort to your query method. This is one of the special parameters supported by Spring Data JPA and it triggers the generation of an order by clause. You then need to instantiate a sort object and specify the ordering of the entity attributes that shall be used to generate the order by clause. When you execute the test case, the findByTitleContains method generates the same SQA statement as the previous method. But this time you define the order dynamically and you can adjust it at runtime. Using Hibernate or any other JPA implementation, you can limit the number of returned records on the query interface. With Spring Data JPA, you can do the same by adding the keywords top or first followed by number between the find and by keywords. When you call the find first five by title order by title ask method on the book repository, Spring Data JPA and Hibernate generate a query that returns the first five book entities whose title contains the given string. As you might have expected, the generated SQA statement contains a limit clause to return the first five records. And after we had a look at ordering and limiting the number of returned records, we also need to talk about pagination. Spring Data JPA provides another special parameter for it. You can add a parameter of type pageable to your query method definition and change the return type to page. The pageable interface makes it very easy to step through the pages. You just define which page number you want to retrieve and how many records should be on a page. That's it. Spring Data JPA takes care of the rest. As expected, the generated SQA query contains a limit clause and it would also include an offset clause if you don't request the first page. Spring Data JPA just provides a relatively small usability layer on top of JPA, but it offers several features that make working with JPA much easier. The derived query feature, which I showed you in this tutorial, is an excellent example of that. Sure, you could write all these queries yourself, but you don't have to. As long as your method name doesn't get too long or complicated, I recommend to let Spring Data JPA generate the required JPQA statement and to take care of the query execution. As a rule of thumb, as long as your query doesn't need more than two parameters, a derived query is the easiest approach. If your query requires more than two parameters, or you can't express it in a short and simple method name, you should define the query yourself. I will show you how to do that in one of my next videos. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free Thoughts on Java library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content, like a cheat sheet for this video, and an ebook about using native queries with JPA and Hibernate. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye!